Hey there guys, welcome to Anthony Reviews, we're Anthony Reviews. Nearly four and a half years ago, I reviewed the very first wave of Power Rangers Lightning Collection figures. That wave consisted of four figures that demonstrated the sculpting, quality, and diversity of figures to come. While the line has been far, and I do mean far, from perfect, overall, it's been a fun time collecting them. This line has managed to feature some of the best versions of certain characters ever, in my opinion. However, the future of Power Rangers is in question. Will there be more shows? Will there be any more figures? At the time of this recording, it's honestly a bit of a mystery. If the rumors are true, then this wave that we're looking at today could be the last for quite some time. And since this video is releasing the day after Hasbro PulseCon, I really hope that it isn't instantly dated. We'll see. Wave 15 consists of three figures, all of which are Rangers. Turbo Red, Lightspeed Rescue Blue, and RPM Yellow. One of my favorite things about the Lightning Collection has been its ability to adapt characters from every era. Yes, they tend to lean on MMPR a lot, and yeah, it can take a lot of time to complete certain teams, but I really like the multi-team grab bag waves like this one. Almost like someone was tasked with building their own team of existing members across the entire morphing grid, I guess. The ones we have here all look really good. They all come off as the rangers they're supposed to without any glaring problems. Turbo Red has all the lines on his suit, Lightspeed Rescue Blue has that Umbrella Corp logo where it needs to be, and RPM Yellow has the weird white dashes on the arms that I guess represent the sort of markings on a road. I don't know, I never really liked that about the RPM suits, but I guess it does have them. Each of these figures feature a normal amount of paint, while these smaller details like the logos from Red and Yellow are pretty clean. Blue's belt buckle is a bit wonky, but it's not that bad. Okay, it's not very good either, but whatever. Sometimes helmets and visors can be a complete mess when trying to get the trim right and making sure that the black doesn't bleed over anywhere else. This won't be the case for everyone, but I'm happy to report that mine are the cleanest helmets that I've seen in quite some time, especially when looking at Turbo Red. I was super worried about Blue's pinwheel design, but it works. The second you move any part of them, it immediately breaks, but we all knew that would happen. All the colors work really well here. I think in terms of paint, this is a pretty solid representation of what the line can do right. Some pieces, like the belts, are just molded plastic, but that's to be expected. Sculpting here is pretty much the standard. It's nice to see the tire detail on RPM Yellow, as well as her sort of seatbelt straps. They're like shoulder seatbelts, right? Because they drive cars. Anyway, most of the details are simply painted on, and that's all fine and dandy. As stated before, there isn't much that feels like a huge missing piece. For articulation, we've got some improvements. All three use the brand new pinless bodies, which look quite good. It's hard to tell if that they're much different from the previous bodies, but they feel slimmer, right? I don't know, maybe I'm just going crazy looking at essentially the same figures, just slightly different over and over again. Everyone's got double-jointed knees and elbows, and that's not exclusive to the males because Summer has them too. With that though, my figure is a bit weird. Her arm sticks out a bit more than I would like, and so I can't really keep it flush to her side. Her other arm can do it just fine, so it does stand out in a weird way. Her legs also feel a little loose as well as this elbow. Maybe all this articulation was a mistake after all. I mean, it, it's fine, you barely notice it. These figures are super articulated and they all look good doing it. Accessories have been a big thing for Power Ranger figures. Here you get a decent amount. They all come with alternate hands, heads, weapons, and effects pieces. Let's take a look at the heads. TJ has had a figure before, so this isn't his first time that Hasbro has had to make his likeness into plastic. A pleasant surprise is that it's actually a brand new head. While the one that came with In Space Blue is much more stern, this version seems happy to be here. I guess you could argue it's appropriate given the season that it's representing, but either way, they look alright. And yes, they do fit on each other's bodies. Summer looks really nice as well. The only problem I have is with the paint on the hair. We've got some paint on the front, but as soon as you turn it ever so slightly, you quickly realize just how much isn't painted. Part of me wonders if it would look that much worse if they didn't even paint it at all. In terms of likeness though, the iZombie actress, I would say, looks good. And then we get to Chad. Look, every wave has its weak point. And this is that weak point, right here. He's just... goofy? 
They clearly based it on this one promo photo of him, and I think most people would have preferred anything else. It's not the worst likeness ever, but it's certainly the worst here. The other accessories, as I mentioned before, are all fine. We've got a good amount of weapons, especially for TJ, and the hands all make sense. I would have really liked a saluting hand for Blue, but I guess that just wasn't meant to be. Not a deal breaker, though. The Power Rangers Lightning Collection line has been a fairly good one. There have been issues, of course. QC was extremely questionable at one point, and things like actor likenesses and suit accuracy wasn't all the best. However, when compared to previous Power Ranger toy lines, I would say these figures do a lot more right than wrong. In 2024, it's entirely possible we won't be seeing any Power Rangers figures at all, and if we do, it could be very well slim pickings. I certainly hope that if this does happen, it is a hiatus and not a cancellation. I really like the figures we looked at today. To end here wouldn't exactly be a bad note, but it would be sad to see them go. This video is brought to you in part by Hobby Link Japan. If you're a fan of things like Super Sentai or just Japanese media in general, why don't you check out Hobby Link Japan? They've got figures, statues, and a whole horde of different kind of collectibles. Click the link down in the description below to check out Hobby Link Japan today. Thank you guys so much for watching my review for what potentially could be the last Power Rangers Lightning Collection wave. Who knows? If you like what you see, feel free to check out some of my other videos, let me know what you think of the video down in the comments below, subscribe if you want to see more in the future, and check out some of my social media accounts linked below in the description box. Thanks again for watching, take care.